the Mangbetu are a people of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Their culture has influenced several forms of artistic expression, such as fashion, art, and music in many Western nations. Perhaps the most notable and recent example is the inspiration for the design of Queen Ramonda in Marvel's Black Panther earlier this year. The design of Padme Amidala in the Star Wars prequels was also heavily influenced by Mingbetu fashion. The history of the spread of Mingbetu customs began over 200 years ago. In the early 1800s, the Mingbetu claimed a decently sized portion of land. Over time, they expanded their territory through conflicts with neighboring tribes such as the Mengbele and Mabisanga. During this time, the assimilation of many different tribes led to an increase in diversity and made their culture distinguishable among tribes in Central Africa. Artificial Cranial Deformation, referred to as Lepombo by the people of the Mengbetu, is the practice of molding the skull, either into a flatter, rounder, cone-like, or more cylindrical shape. Two to four weeks after birth, the process begins while the skull is slightly developed, yet still malleable. There are many methods that have historically been used by different cultures. The Mingbetu wrap the head with cloth, which is tightened and adjusted over a period of at least six months to produce the desired shape. For instances where the shape of the skull is extremely exaggerated, it's common for the eyelids to become slender. Most examples of members of the Mingbetu with elongated skulls are women. Since it was used to accentuate exotic hairstyles, it may have been more common for baby girls to have their heads wrapped. However, it was also seen as a symbol of status, which gives reason to why it was common among men, since the Mengbetu have a patrilineal culture. The Mengbetu begin to practice Lepombo most likely due to pseudoscientific beliefs that an elongated skull increases the size of the brain and therefore increases intelligence. Belgian colonists argued that it interferes with development which incentivized the practice to be outlawed. Despite numerous arguments made for both cases, there isn't any concrete evidence to support either side. The effects simply haven't been studied enough. Belgian rule in the Congo began in the 1880s when King Leopold II started to colonize Central Africa purely out of self-interest. It was only until 1906 that the Belgian government recognized it as an official colony due to political pressures. Between 1940 and 1950, the amount of Belgians living in the Belgian Congo more than doubled, from about 17,000 to over 39,000. Lepombo began to slowly die out in the Congo after the Belgian government outlawed the practice around 1950. Humanitarian efforts such as this were a direct result of the rapid westernization of the Belgian Congo at the time. Of the four provinces created by the Belgian government, the Mengbetu fell in the Oriental province. Likely due to their northward location, the effects of colonialism fell hard on the people of this region. Mengbetu tradition was slowly substituted for Christianity and Belgian education. The exploitation of resources was especially harsh on the Mengbetu because of the low production of resources such as rubber and other cash crops relative to other regions. Punishment for failing to meet demands was as severe as severing the limbs of slow workers and their family members. After many years of torturous working conditions, numerous revolts and the growth of African nationalism led Congo to gain its independence in 1960. The colonization of Congo had lasting effects. Not just in Belgium, but throughout Europe, images of Mengbetu women emerged and circulated in many media, ranging from postcards and postage stamps, to sculptures, jewelry, bookends, and hood ornaments for cars. The Mengbetu harp is another piece of their culture which has gained quite a bit of notoriety. Praised for its authentic craftsmanship, the harp is a particularly valuable instrument. A single harp has sold for as much as $100,000. In modern times, it's been reproduced mainly to act as a decoration. Apart from this, Mangbetu antiques and artwork continue to emerge. Mangbetu fashion has also influenced the African diaspora, serving as the basis for some eccentric hairstyles. Though the Mingbetu are one of several cultures who practice skull elongation, their influence was broadened by European colonialism, and because of its long history, is still referenced in present media. Thanks for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at meta underscore galactic, where I post about videos I'm making or plan to make. And as always, if you have any feedback, leave it in the comment section and let me know what you'd like to have discussed in a future video.